to Nick de Bois. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, and I'm grateful for the opportunity just to highlight a couple of points in favour uh, of um, uh, these measures introduced by the government, because obviously the opposition, judging by uh, the comments of the um, right honourable member, um, do fundamentally see it as an attack on rights, um, uh, when in fact I see it as a chance to empower individuals, empower workers to become owners, to become shareholders, and move from employment to entrepreneurialism. This is something that should be encouraged. It should not be fraught with fear, and I will give way, of course. I absolutely agree with the Honourable Gentleman, but I fail to understand why you have to withdraw people's rights in order to achieve that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I will come on to that, um, because uh, I'm, I, I know uh, the Honourable Gentleman has a, a history, as I understand, in corporate mergers and acquisitions. Well, when I started my business some time ago, an opportunity like this to have actually engaged with individuals and offered them a stake in my business was fundamental to starting my business because in that case it's all about the people you work with. So I gave away shares to individuals that I wanted to give shares to, to make them part of the company. I had no, uh, no advantage of what is being offered today, but I also had no disadvantage of the market that we're in today, because when I started my business, we had not undergone a massive increase of regulation and employment uh, regulation that has since come in, yeah. both from Europe and with the previous government. I will give way. I'm very for giving way. He, like me, has experience of running small businesses, and on the point of the connection between rights and responsibilities in a small company. Would you not agree with me that it is fundamental in micro, start-up, small businesses, those, yeah. where those red tape and regulations hold back the progress of the business, uh, to encourage employees to understand the link between the two? And would you agree with me, furthermore, that the, that's why it's been welcomed by entrepreneurs? Yeah. Brent Hoberman, the co-founder of LastMinute.com, Stuart Rose from m and senior business people. Brent Hoberman himself said, this imaginative new proposal will be welcomed by British entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial employees alike. It encourages workers to be company owners and gives fast-growing businesses more flexibility in return. I do agree, and the point I'm trying to make, as balanced and as fair as I can under the circumstances, is that when I started a business, as many do, they don't sit down generally, when I did, and start to worry about employment rights and legislation. You tackle it with enthusiasm, you want to go for it, but when I did that, we're going far back as the late 80s, when I did not have to think about those yeah. issues that are now in front of many people, which are very much at the forefront of their mind, which is why I welcome this. But let me stick to my main premise that I would like to consider and in response to the Honourable Gentleman's comments. First of all, I don't believe anyone will give shares up in a business lightly. It's not something that you do. You only give shares up in return for value, and you get that value from people or if you sell them or whatever. So you will be looking for value from what you actually give up. And that is a perfectly reasonable uh, assumption to make. But also you have to bear in mind, as the Honourable Gentleman I will know with his background, that by when you transfer those shares, you transfer rights as well um, uh, in direct contrast to what you're talking about on employment rights. You are transferring rights under the very legislation his own, the last government brought in under the Corporation, um, uh, um, Corporation Act of 2006, when they bought it under the Companies Act rather, they bought in legislation that enhanced the rights of minority shareholders, such on matters of prejudicial. They even can form quasi-partnerships by owning a small minority um, shareholding. So you don't give up shares lightly, and you are actually giving rights to individuals. Well, well I, uh, if the gentleman wants to intervene, I'm, I'm very happy to take up his point. I, I, look, I don't disagree with many of the points that the Honourable Gentleman is making, but what I still persist in failing to understand, and he'll have to forgive me, is I still don't understand why, despite what he is saying, you need to link uh, giving shares, allowing them to participate in the way that he's described, why link that with taking away their fundamental rights at work? Well, I hope he will understand, as I'm sure he does, that actually 
the, most, the, the best chances for success for a small micro niche business, yeah. and I believe these are the people who will benefit from this and become tomorrow's medium businesses, is to be in the most flexible market you can be in. The supply side has to be flexible so that they can afford to take the risk. So I think these very modest, modest um, removals that have been on, put on offer to individuals that they are not compelled to take will 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 actually make the um, uh, I will in a second will uh, make actually the case as to why this is attractive for the employee who is entrepreneur minded risk uh, and not risk averse as well as the small um, flexible business leader that wants to start the business I give way to this gentleman first thank the honourable member for, for giving way he makes a, a a point and it is a legitimate point I happen to disagree with it uh, that these regulations are overburdensome. Uh, one person's regulation is another person's basic employment protection. But the critical issue is surely the link. So his argument may, may, uh, may well be an argument worth having in this place, but why link these two together? That's the critical issue that my constituents don't understand. Uh, look, uh, the, the, the direct answer to that is, when you're taking, what is the biggest step you do when you start a small business? The biggest step that you do is you employ someone. Yeah. You move on from becoming that sole trader, that person working in his own environment, his own boss, without yeah. responsibility for anyone else, with, uh, with, with meeting your own needs and those of your family that you're supporting. This is the biggest step you make. You don't want to do it um, chained with too many onerous responsibilities too early on. So you seek, to, you seek to strike a deal with your investor, your partner, and in return for giving them that flexibility and not asking a single penny in cash to invest in a business, that's a good deal. And I tell you, I would have taken it had it been on offer to me had I faced these regulations. I'll give way to this gentleman if I may. Honourable friend, for giving way. And he's describing very well and effectively the challenges of a, a, a new and small business. Does it not surprise him that the party opposite, and particularly the shadow anti business secretary, is so negative, so negative about these, these supply side changes? Um, I'm, I'm not surprised that actually the Honourable Gentleman, uh, who speaks very eloquently, expresses his support for employee ownership and share ownership. Neither am I surprised that whilst they express their support, they will probably vote against it. <laughs> However, I just leave the House um, with this thought, um, that we all want Britain to succeed. We know, looking at the statistics that I, we have traded across this floor many times, the growth will come from the small and medium yeah, enterprises yeah, yeah, that dominate yeah, yeah. our economy. And, and, and uh, I may in a second, but that the small businesses, who I believe will actually take up this offer, and I thought and I believe that is what the government recognised as well will be the ones that become our medium enterprises that are so critical to our growth. And I, I will give way. Thank you for, for, for giving way. I think one of the most significant factors, features of this uh, current recession has been the flexibility in the labour market. And if you compare that to the 80s, where there was widespread redundancies that took place as people were just laid off, we have this time had a remarkable flexibility and a partnership between management and employees with the reduced working hours, reduced pay. It's been a great tribute to employees and to management. That flexibility has proved to work. Wouldn't the temptation be under these arrangements to simply get rid of those staff? No employer, no responsible employer thinks losing the experience that he has invested in to help develop his business would ever relish the prospect of losing someone. I have been in the position where I have had the pleasure of offering people a job and recognising how for them it can be in some cases, if they come from unemployment, a life-changing experience. But I have also shared the pain of having to lose people often through no fault of their own and I will take no lectures from anyone to tell me that employers relish losing people. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. does not happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I will leave it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah.